Welcome back to another edition of Richard Kent. We bring you the finest, only the most vintage of vintage, classic electrical instruments of days gone by. Today we're looking at a super rare multimeter, vintage or not, this one you don't see every day, the Agilent 977A in the Retro Tech Spotlight. Multimeters have history. It's amazing how the world of multimeters has its own sort of um, rich, vibrant history and passion and politics. It's what makes these instruments so exciting. Uh, Agilent 977A is definitely one of those really interesting meters. The way the story goes is way back in the day and the foray of Pan-Asian uh, production, Fluke's foray was with the 17 and 19 models. They were intended for that Asian market. Guess what? <laughs> there was not a lot of positive feedback on them. Their lifespan was definitely short, and uh, fortunately, Fluke didn't have such a great experience with these meters. And here we go. Uh, not a Fluke, but basically the same meter without that yellow exterior. The 977A from Agilent. So yeah, most definitely, it's a Fluke 19 with an all gray exterior. And you know what? I gotta say, I like the look. I like the look. Believe it or not, this was basically new. Well, new old stock. And it has a Agilent Technologies appendix as well as the actual user manual. Oh, isn't that awesome? Look at the date on that, November 1999 is when this meter came out. So almost 25 years ago, definitely uh, back in the day. Meter was wrapped in that nice little plastic and look at these test leads. Unbelievable, they have not even been opened yet. They do have that 1000 volt cat one 10 amp rating, but these are really cool test leads. They're, they're big and they're bold and oh, it's just so nice to see new old stock. And in that manual was, yes, a certificate of calibration as well. Uh, it's not dated but it is nonetheless there. So these meters were calibrated before they left the factory. Once again, no nice soft molding on the outside, just strictly plastic going on here. We have the embedded, of course, tilt stand, which, you know, has a pretty unusual angle. Look at that, that is uh, definitely more than 45 degrees. Check that out, 30 degree uh, angle with that. We have our atypical Fluke style selector switch with all of the ranges, AC, DC volts, millivolts, uh, capacitance, continuity, and we even have a separate diode setting which is really, really nice for 1999. Now that selector is a little bit mushy. It doesn't feel like ball and spring, but uh, we'll take a look on the inside shortly. All in all, though, nice soft membrane style touch pads. You know, we're considering a 25 year old meter. Hey, this thing wasn't bad. Take a look at the display. Does it look familiar? It should. It looks a lot like a Fluke 87.3, doesn't it? Wow. And look at that. 25 years later, 5.00 volts on that precision voltage reference. Oh, man. Even that resistance mode is spot on. Oh, I love the retro land. One kilo ohm is what we want. 1.00 is what we're getting. Okay, it's it's wavering a little bit, but man, oh man, I'm gonna give that an A plus. And same thing for the kilo ohm. Look at that, 100 almost. Another very cool feature with the Agilent 977A is the fact you had a nano Siemens. Nano Siemens. Oh yes. Put it into resistance mode and hit that range switch. Couple, oh, I just missed it. And there you are. Nano Siemens mode it is. Oh. So I've stuck in a 1000 mega ohm precision resistor in nano Siemens mode and we should have one nano semen and look at that. One nano semen it is. Okay, 1.01. Same thing with a 100 mega ohm precision resistor, same thing, look at that, 10 nano seam is what we want, 9.99 is what we're getting. And once again, that is directly in those inputs. Here we are with our little Agilent, well, not quite that little, uh, 977A 
taken apart. And look at that nice shielding going on here. We have that uh, piezo basically heated right up to that plastic. That's providing the output for the sound. But man, oh man, it's shielded, it's shielded. Oh, beautiful. Oddly enough, if you look at the back here, we have a couple of different fuse ratings. They have a 440 milliamp as well as a uh, 11 amp, which is what we have here in this particular model. Isn't this something just, it's just beautiful, isn't it? This orange uh, capacitor here, that's our AC coupling capacitor. Beside that, we have our little PTC thermistor. And I believe, let me just double check here. Yeah, in case you haven't heard, when we're in retro tech land, we only use retro multimeters. Let's just see what that resistor is. One kilo ohm exactly. Alrighty. And of course, here we have a couple of metal oxide barristers for the uh, over voltage protection. And finally, that big current shunt, which is in series with the uh, 10 amp, uh, 11 amp rather, fuse. And shielded inside this big tin can, we've got the uh, compensation capacitors as well as our voltage divider. We have a couple of potentiometers over here for uh, trimming and calibration. And as we talked about earlier, there you go with the Fluke Insignia, Fluke 17 and Fluke 19. Turned into an Agilent 977A. That battery as well, kind of a weird floppy thing going on here. A little sloppy, it's actually held in place by the other side of the case, but uh, without it, it just flops around. It does have a little bit of plastic though on top of that PCB to keep it protected. Selector pads, look at that. That was held in by one tiny little Phillips screw that went right over there. And man, there's a lot of grease on there. Lots of grease. Wow, very, very thick with grease. All right, now let's just pull it apart. Tiny little tracks, by the way. Tiny tracks, indeed. They look gold-plated, that's for sure. Let's see if we can take this off now. Oh, we gotta get that selector switch off somehow. Let me figure that one out. Oh yeah, so just give it a little pushy and it came falling right out like that. Okay. Now this should all, we hope, come out. Let's see here. Push pads have been removed and that should just sort of pop out right now. You really got to be very delicate with these older units, that's for sure. There we go, just like so. And almost. And voila. Oh, gosh. Look at that. So basically that PCB is retained by the four little plastic clips on all the sides. And man, oh man, look at that. We have a plastic inlay for the membrane itself. So the buttons aren't just going in, they're actually resting on that plastic. A nice attention to detail there. And look at the soldering on here. Exquisite. Oh man, you can tell that's all hand soldered as well. Oh, beautiful. And yeah, I failed to mention, but those input jacks in there like a million bucks they were screwed and threaded on as well as just being soldered up to the yang so gorgeous something else that's rather cool is you can tell here it says off and that off actually matches up with a little groove here on the selector so when you're putting it back together you know exactly where it should be oh man they thought of everything and finally, on the other side, we don't have a ball and spring like I suspected. We have one of these uh, Delrin springs uh, that provide that switching mechanism. These go, you know, they all use them. Uh, Keysight, Fluke, and it's proven itself time and time again. You're not losing anything when it comes to uh, sustainability. Uh, they just work as well. Only caveat, probably not quite as good in terms of a tactile feel, um, but they will outlast just about all of us. Well, that's depressing. And sure enough, look at that fluke. 
Uh, 85, there is the IC for this meter. So it's a fluke, it's the name called Agilent. By the way, interesting what they've done with that oscillator here. Um, wow, I wonder why they did it like that. Finally, the other end, we have our double Elastomar strips. And just because it's all apart now, I'm gonna give this a nice little uh, cleaning with some uh, alcohol and uh, cotton swab. Hey, it's been 25 years, why not? I'll even clean uh, the part of the connector here on top as well, just so it makes good contact. This is definitely one very interesting meter in the vintage realm. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this little trip down vintage memory lane. You, me, and the Agilent 977A.